Welcome back. Once again, adventurers, to Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. In the last episode, Jin Kizuragi fought a very entertaining, albeit one sided, battle against Rachel Alucard, who mysteriously transported him from and later to Kagutsuchi. And, uh,. Once again, thanks to the uh, temporal causality loop, Jin Kisaragi descended to the depths of Kagutsuchi to face off against Ragnar the Blood Edge, just outside of the cauldron. And after that, fought valiantly but futilely against the Murakumo unit, Nu-13. And it seems as though history has inevitably repeated itself. With Nu falling into the depths of the cauldron with Ragnar in hand, preparing to fuse together in order to form the calamity known as the Black Beast, with Jin Kisaragi following in tow. Suddenly I see a girl. She stands quietly, like she's only watching. She says something as I fall into the cauldron, but she's too far away. I can't possibly hear her. But even so, before she disappears, I swear I hear something. It will happen again, won't it? Perhaps I was expecting a little too much. Perhaps you were indeed, Rachel Alucard. Once again, we find ourselves in the year 2099. On hundred years prior to the events of Calamity Trigger, and only uh, a very few short days before the advent of the Black Beast and the beginning of the infamous uh, conflict known in the known in the history of Blaze Blue as the Dark War. When I come to, I realize I'm flying somewhere. I know that I have read this before, but I will do so again for posterity's sake, because who knows? Perhaps uh, something different might happen after the fact, if not before. I can't feel anything anymore. I can move my right hand, but just barely. In other words, Jin Kisaragi is, uh, is crippled, albeit not... Not entirely fatally, but barely clinging to life. The stars are lovely. The stars are lovely indeed, if not the moon. The night sky is so beautiful, I can't help but think about it. But the moon, the moon is too bright for my eyes. And unfortunately, if the moon were to fall upon Jin Kisaragi, there is nothing that he can do about it, unless uh, a miracle intervenes. I try to block out its light with my right hand. Tears begin to roll down my cheeks. Brother. My brother. I have to kill my brother. He must know why. He must understand. I keep telling myself he does, but it doesn't help. The tears start again. Who's there? A presence you now know all too well. You're... Indeed. A little girl that you fought against, uh, earlier, in place of Noel Vermilion, and, uh, that actually, uh, that actually makes this uh, sequence of causality make a little bit more sense. Even though uh, for Rachel Alucard, this is actually technically the first time that uh, you and her have met in the year 2099. Although, uh, being a unique vampire, it seems that Rachel Alucard is already aware of this chance encounter. I know this woman. 
She is the one who watched me fall into the cauldron, the same woman who looks down upon me with a bored look on her face. I want to ask her what she's doing here, but I can no longer speak. All I can do is stare at her. Soon it will be born. Indeed it shall. I already know what's going to happen. What's going to... <coughs> Sorry, wasn't quick enough for my microphone. What's going to be born here? The very thing I was born to destroy. But I have no strength left. I can barely move. Mr. Hero, how would you like to become a real hero? That is the, uh, that is the very question, isn't it? Rachel Alucard. And this is where our tale with Jun Kisaragi ended before. And yet this time, things are a little different. It seems that we are back in the uh, Chamber of the Cauldron. Well, I cut myself out there uh, to stifle another cough, but uh, Jun Kisaragi is... Uh, Back in the cauldron chamber of Kagutsuchi. And uh, there is a presence. A presence that is known as Hakuman of the Six Heroes. You are? Who has uh, suddenly materialized with the uh, distortion. Uh, Ability that inadvertently whisked him away uh, shortly before he was prepared to strike down Ragnar the Blood Edge. And yet Hakuman has absolutely no words for Jin Kisaragi whatsoever. No grandiose speech, no calling himself the White Void, the Just Sword, the Cold Steel. No, uh, reaping the, f the flames of the world and cleansing them in the fires of destruction, or the sins of this world, I should say. Just utter silence between Hakuman and Jin Kisaragi. <sighs> the fight him we must. Jin Kisaragi versus Hakuman. This could be a uh, very one-sided fight against Jin Kisaragi. The wheel of fate is turning. Hopefully, we can turn the tide. Rebel. Because this did not happen before. Action. Die. Mm. Dissipate. Back off. But we could still lose. <laughs> Yeah, we could, uh... We could still lose. Yeah, I will... I will spam that move to the end of time. Block that attack. Ooh. Nope. Doing slightly better than Ragnar, that's for sure. Not quite able to catch him off guard. Ah, get back here. Dissipate indeed. Ah, just barely missed him. Jin is more, far more formidable foe than Ragnar, that's for sure. At least in this instance. Yeah. It's far easier to beat 
Pokemon with Jin than it is with Ragna, at least for me. And, uh... That too was an end of sorts. And, uh, Jin was successful in, uh, vanquishing Hakuman, but, uh, no more mystery was shared on, uh, on that encounter. Which is, uh, rather curious, especially for a, uh, seasoned veteran of the Dark War like Hakuman. But, uh, for now we can definitely say that Jin Kisaragi's story has, uh, firmly come to an end, and when we return adventurers, we shall move on to the next chapter of Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. As always adventurers, until next we meet.